Hi, I'm Mary Migton, a graduate student in the Speech Language Pathology program. Let's talk about acoustical resonance, which is resonance in a cavity. Anything capable of vibration has resonance, which is the ability to vibrate. Today, I'm going to talk about vibration in a cavity, also known as a resonator. A resonator is an object, such as a vocal tract, a clarinet, or an ear canal that has certain natural frequencies or resonant frequencies. Most cavity resonators are tubes open at one end and closed at the other. So this jug is an example of a cavity resonator. Open at one end, closed at the other. The first cavity resonator that comes to mind as an SLP student might be the vocal tract. Simply put, and you'll learn a lot more about this later, the vocal folds vibrate, and the vibration excites the air in your vocal tract. The vocal tract has a certain resonant frequency or natural frequency in which it vibrates the most freely and with maximum amplitude. This is dependent on its shape and size. We use our articulators, like our teeth and our tongue, to modify the sound vibrations into speech. Perhaps an easier cavity resonator to picture and think about in this stage of learning is the clarinet. The clarinet has a wooden reed, which the tongue presses on, and the wooden reed acts as the vibrator, creating vibrations that excite the air in the clarinet to vibrate. There are two different types of clarinet and a few others, but this is the B-flat clarinet. And there's also the bass clarinet, which is so big and long that you have to sit in order to play it. They each have a different natural frequency that they vibrate at. The keys, or the holes, on the clarinet are like the articulators in the mouth. As we shut the different keys, different sounds are produced. Low notes are low frequency sounds, like E, which is the lowest note I play on the clarinet. You can put down all of the keys. <laughs> or a high frequency sound, like a high note. As an SLP student, I wish I had more time to play my clarinet because it's my favorite cavity resonator. Now the most important resonator when the SLP student is talking about the auditory system is the ear canal. The ear canal is not some randomly shaped and sized import tube. It is usually about 2.5 centimeters long. These are my exaggerated um, ear canals. It starts at the external auditory meatus, which is the opening, and ends at the tympanic membrane, which is your eardrum. When the air in the canal, which is my little cups, is excited by sound waves, the air will vibrate at its own resonant natural frequency. Now, a malformed ear can have a huge impact on hearing because it will change the resonant frequency of the canal. The coolest part about ear canals is that the frequencies of speech match the frequencies that this auditory cavity resonator is the most sensitive to. So don't put anything smaller than your elbow in your ear. Protect that fragile cavity resonator.